So I'd like to welcome you for the, today's webinar about cryoparametric mechanism design. Uh, my name is uh, Urs Simler. Uh, I will uh, show you a little bit about this uh, tool in cryoparametric called mechanism design extension. First, I'd like to introduce myself, the company I'm working for, and then I'd like to talk a little bit about the capabilities of uh, mechanism and design and for sure we are doing quite a lot of uh, demonstrations. Uh, I will use here a lunette, this is for a turning process, an additional device and uh, I will also show you a nice example. I got it from GrabCAD, uh, this is a radio engine. If you have any question, please uh, use the question panel in the GoTo uh, webinar application and at the end of the webinar we'll have time to answer your questions. So first about me, uh, my name is Ur Simler. Uh, my name states for simulation uh, expert. I'm uh, working for a company called Kia Informatic. I've been with the company for four years and yes, before I worked uh, 20 years for PTC as a pre-sales and consulting guy. Not in the call uh, is our salesperson, Daniel Lowsley. If you have any question about uh, sales topics, you can contact him uh, under these coordinates here. Okay, and I'm also an owner of a YouTube channel. Feel free to uh, subscribe for this uh, channel. You'll find there uh, a lot of webinar recordings, tips and tricks, and animation uh, from components in the simulation environment. Okay, Gia Informatic uh, is a company with about uh, 140 people located in the middle of Switzerland. We are a PTC reseller. We have a known IT uh, services and we are also reseller of SAP solutions in the CAD-CAM environment. Our main partner is uh, PTC and of course we also support uh, additional application in the CAD PLM environment. So we're doing uh, training consulting in the PTC Creo parametric environment with PTC Creo Elements Direct and all the other tools from uh, PTC. As a topology, topology optimization solution, we use uh, Protop from uh, another Slovenian company called CAESS. We are also uh, support you with AutoCreer, electrical clearance and creepage analysis from Elaborate. We sell solution from an Austrian company called Techsoft and from a German company called Software Factory. Uh, we are monitoring some uh, customer, PDM customer systems and we have known a training center in Ofdringen. But uh, today's topic is a uh, Creo parametric mechanism. I think this is a quite uh, old module. Uh, I guess it was invented in about uh, 1998 uh, last century, uh, but I think there are quite interesting uh, capabilities in this uh, tool. Mechanism is divided in two uh, let's say options. Uh, the mechanism design extension is included in every grid parametric license and this one, the additional option, dynamics option, this is an additional module. Uh, you have to pay license, additional license fee for it. So mechanism design extension uh, is taking care about kinematics and the dynamics option is taking care about the uh, dynamics. So dynamics means 
forces uh, and the body motion is captured by it so you can see the forces and and all that uh, kind of stuff and with mechanism you just see let's say the the animation or movement behavior of it. So that means with let's say the standard license we are going to demonstrate today takes care about uh, clashes, about the velocity, uh, about collision detection, about uh, mechanism envelopes and that kind of stuff. And let's say the red mark tool, it's more an advanced tool where we can see the forces and we can tr control, let's say, the, the acceleration behavior of our component. I will not show mechanism and dynamic, dynamics option today. Okay, uh, here we see also the capabilities of the extension in green here and of course the additional capabilities of mechanism and dynamics option. Okay, so in detail what can we do with the mechanism and design extension? We can check does our mechanism work? Uh, are there any interference uh, while I'm moving my component? What is maybe the speed of a certain point? What is, what's the acceleration of a certain point? Uh, I can capture motion envelopes and all that kind of stuff. So I can see the kinematic behavior of my mechanism here. And I think it's quite easy to use because it's uh, integrated in PTC Creo parametric. It's quite easy to uh, use because you're in assembly mode and you just assemble your components with uh, so-called connections instead of, let's say, using references, you're just creating connections and with the help of the connections you can set some uh, limits on that connections. You can move your component, you can drag your component, you can bring, you can save your, uh, let's say, uh, exploded states, you can bring it to uh, the drawings, you can create some motion envelopes, uh, trace curves, and of course you can see the uh, movement, be the kinematic behavior of a component, you can create some movie to explain, let's say, the functionality of your mechanism. And all starts, let's say, with the different type of joints you're using during uh, the assembly process, process of your components, and here it's quite important that you know all that uh, capabilities of uh, joint types and I think it's also quite important that you know that you can set here some limits. It's also possible to create here some regeneration positions here and I think it's also interesting you can capture these positions and bring the positions to the drawings. In addition to, let's say, these uh, joints like pin, slider, cylinder, planner, bolt, bearing and so on, you will have other connection types like gears, cams, 3D contacts and belts. And uh, with that kind of uh, connection we can, let's say, extend uh, the capabilities of uh, joining our components. And here there is a quite, uh, let's say, interesting uh, uh, capability within mechanism and design. Um, we call it the drag capabilities. In the assembly mode you see here a symbol like that here and with that symbol in that menu you can uh, save here some snapshots and at the end of the day you can uh, 
safety snapshots as exploded states and these exploded states can be brought to the drawing. I will show that later on. Uh, for the behavior, uh, for the moving behavior, you can uh, define different servo motors with tables, with ramp functions or user-defined. Uh, and then let's say your component will hopefully move as you define it. So later on we'll see that also in the live demonstration. An additional capability within mechanism and design extension is to generate envelopes, shapes, and all that kind of stuff. That means we can do some CAM synthesis. So we are defining here maybe a movement behavior maybe here on that slider joint here. And while we are uh, moving that component with that behavior, we are turning our cam here one time, and we can create a, a curve here, and we can use later on that curve with a cam connection. And we, let's say, move our component here, and in the end, we are getting uh, the behavior, the movement behavior on, uh, let's say, the end of our mechanism. This is quite an interesting uh, uh, capability. We have uh, two different type of analysis we can perform with, with mechanism design extension. This is a position analysis and the kinematic analysis. So the kinematic analysis uh, will also give you information about accelerations and velocity. And let's say the position analysis is just showing us the, the movement of our component. And let's say our drivers in a position analysis can also be like that here, so they don't have to be in that situation, uh, let's say, uh, C2, uh, they, do, they, they can be also, let's say, oh, how is it called? I don't know in English. But with, with the kinematic behavior, you, re, you really must make sure here that the kinematic behavior is smooth, okay. We'll see that also later on in uh, the demonstration. Of course, we can set up uh, different of measure types in order to, let's say, see the position, the distances between those parts, and uh, we can uh, set up different evaluation methods like average or integral or what else. I was talking about, let's say, the placeholders, trace curves, and motion envelopes. Here we see a typical motion envelope of an engine. Okay, I will also show it later on during the demonstration. Okay, when you uh, analyzed uh, the movement behavior of your components, you can also use that movement in different PTC tools like Creo Illustrate or Creo View, and therefore you have to export the results as a FRA file, and this FRA file can be taken into Illustrate or Creo View in order to uh, see the analyzed uh, movement behavior of uh, mechanism and design or mechanism and dynamics option. And of course, the movies you are creating can also be rendered in order to get nice uh, films. So today's uh, component uh, will be a lunette. I don't know the word in English, but this is uh, for the machining, turning process, you quite often need here in the middle. Uh, you need a support in order to have here, let's say, 
no displacements on your machined uh, component. And here, let's say this component uh, must support uh, different uh, diameters and therefore uh, we must, let's say, check the behavior of this uh, component. Later on, I will show an additional example. I grabbed that from a community called Crabcat. Uh, here under this link you'll find, let's say, a very, very detailed radial engine from a user called Matt and uh, if you are a member of Crabcat you also can download it. So the, uh, the movement, the mechanism is everything is modeled in this uh, data and you really will be astonished uh, what kind of work is behind that uh, mechanism. But let's start here with uh, Lunette. Therefore, I will switch to Creo Parametric. Creo Parametric 6.04. And uh, this behavior or this mechanism can also be analyzed, I would say, in Creo Parametric 1 or even in Pro Engineer Wildfire, I don't know what. So let's start with it and let's open a uh, component here. So I assembled here a housing uh, by default uh, in this uh, assembly. And in addition to that, I'm bringing in additional components. I'm taking here this middle part. I'm opening that one and by holding down control and alt key I can move my component in or relative to my assembly. And in that area up here, instead of using let's say references like coordinate systems and mate it, I will use here the capability to connect uh, the components with joints and I want to create here a slider joint and I want to have a movement of my middle part here in that direction therefore I'm also showing here let's say the datum axis and I'm redefining here again and I'm using here a slider joint. I'm selecting here the axis itself and I can see here the behavior like that and I can see here the uh, rotation behavior. For let's say successful placement, uh, CreoParametric wants me to select additional references in order to prevent that rotation. I'm doing that with that reference and that reference. My parts changing the color or my component is changing the color and it states the definition is complete. Of course maybe in oh, that area up here I can see I'm getting here some interferences. Therefore I want to stop here the movement of that component and I'm defining here let's say some references uh, to get let's say the axis uh, movement here. And I have all the capabilities to bring in here some additional limits. I'm setting the limit at 60 millimeters. Therefore, let's say the movement, the further movement to the left isn't possible anymore. I just can move it in that direction because I didn't, let's say, uh, uh, stop here or, or I didn't set the limit there. And additional capabilities, I can also bring in here a specific position and I can, let's say, bring this value here as a regeneration value and I can say, okay, always when I'm regenerating my part, this position uh, has to be taken into account. That means, okay, I can move that guy here until 60 millimeters, here until the end and if I push here, regenerate, I will see a position of 100 millimeter from here to here. Okay, and in that area, 
we are getting, let's say, a specific symbol, this guy here. And this symbol states with the point in the middle that uh, this component is connected with a joint to another component. OK, let's bring in an additional uh, component here. Let's take this Hebel. OK, the Hebel has to, has to be placed up there. And in that area here, I want to uh, use a pin joint. OK. I'm switching here to pin joint. I'm selecting here some references. OK. And in order to get a reference uh, in the housing, I'm selecting those two surfaces. This guy here can spin around, but I want to, let's say, uh, also set some limits, therefore I'm going for the rotational axis and by selecting two references I'm getting uh, an angle, I'm switching the angle direction to that direction and I can see, okay, this guy here can be moved around maximum limit 176 and maybe to the other direction here when I'm moving that guy, I think he cannot go further than about, uh, let's say, this, this limit here. So that means I'm setting here on the rotational axis maybe a limit of the minimum limit of uh, 120 millimeters. OK. And now I can see I can move that guy here. And in, let's say, the application mechanism itself, I can bring here some additional connections like CAM, 3D contact belts and gears. And in that area we can also see the additional capabilities of mechanism and dynamics option. So if you do not have that license, these icons here will be grayed out. And for the Demonstration, I will not use that icon, so I'm just using a mechanism and design functionality. As I'm doing right now, I'm building a CAM, and in order just to be able to select surfaces, I'm switching the filter to surface, and I say, okay, I want to connect this guy or the surfaces here by holding down the control key, okay, to the next CAM. And I'm selecting here, let's say, the cylindrical surfaces. OK. And because the properties of liftoff are not enabled here, the component here or the cam will connect, of course. And I can move my component as far as I like. OK. And of course, here we see, OK, it stops because of this limitation. And of course, if I hit here the Control G or Return Rate button, it will move to a position of 100 millimeter. I'm going back for assembly mode. And in the assembly mode, I'm bringing in the next component this sub-assembly and it should be connected here with the help of a pin joint. OK, I'm setting that pin. And this time I'm a lazy guy. I do not set any uh, limitations. That means, OK, this can spin around like hell. Going back here again, maybe for mechanism, in order to connect this cam here. Using again maybe only the surfaces, this, this, control, this, this, middle mouse button should be connected to this cylindrical surface. And because liftoff is not enabled, it connects and then can see the behavior here. And here we can see okay we are getting an uh, interference and I can also use, let's say, this uh, CAM connection to prevent this interference. So I'm using CAM connection. 
I select those surfaces here. They should have a connection to those surfaces here. And in that case, I'm enabling the lift off. Okay. That means this guy is not moving here to the, it's not connecting always. It only, it doesn't allow me uh, to, let's say, interfere. And I can see that behavior. Of course, I can see right now here if I'm, uh, let's say, redefining this uh, axis connection, then I can see, okay, the limit of that position. That means I can move on till 178 uh, millimeters. So that means for me the movement right now is possible be between uh, 60 and 178. Therefore, I'm bringing in here a uh, additional servo motor and the profile of the servo motor can be influenced by several functionalities. I'm using here right now a table driven uh, motor with the help of two rows. I say okay at the time of zero the position should be 60 millimeters and at the time of 10 seconds here the position should be 178 millimeters. I can check the behavior of that one and of course right now I have a linear behavior. I could bring in here monotonic behavior to have a very very nice uh, behavior or ca I can use here right now a spline and because I have two points uh, it will also be a straight line. Okay so it's quite easy to set up this uh, uh, let's say motors and let's maybe go back to assembly mode because I need uh, any additional components here and in that case I want to assemble here a single part called Schwenkrückholung O. This is the top component and it should be connected here and for this connection I'm using here additional points and I want to connect here in that area with a cylindrical joint and in that area here I want to connect that line here with that point there. So let's do it here. First I want to create a cylindrical joint from that surface to that surface. So that means my component can be moved in that direction and it can also move or turn around the axis here. But at the end I want to let's say connect or right now I will connect this line here with that point from the pin. Okay and therefore I'm bringing here, bring in here a new set and this set uh, should be not a cylindrical connection or cylindrical joint, it should be a slot connection from that line to that point. And of course my component moves also in let's say this, this I call it set direction to a specific position and of course if I'm checking now the behavior of my component and I can see right now oh it moves great and of course here later on I will use and later on the inverse kinematic behavior uh, to create uh, this slot. In order to finish my component I'm using uh, the last part I'm going to assemble. I'm assembling it here with the same connections as before. First uh, cylinder joint from that to that and oops and here I'd like to use I can do that also the right mouse button here by adding a new set okay and I will use here a slot connection 
that guy here to that guy. Okay, good luck for me. Looks not that bad and we see here the behavior. And here we have also the capability to drag our components. Normally I'm, do, I'm doing the dragging by holding down control and alt key. I'm just moving or picking my component and moving it. But here with that uh, capabilities, we are getting an additional menu. And here under the constraint folder, we can define exact constraint to see, let's say, a specific position. I mean, here I can drag my component and I call it, okay, I, I save that position by clicking on the taking snapshot icon. I can name it. Uh, maybe this is uh, off. And by moving right now, it's here. I will say, okay, this is an additional snapshot called on. Okay, and here, very, very interesting, I can uh, set the specific motion axis constraint by clicking here on my slider joint axis. I can bring in here a specific value. Maybe I want to see one, two, two millimeters. Okay, pressing enter, and now I see one, two, two millimeters. I can save that one and I rename it as one, two, two millimeters. Enter button. I'm going back for my snapshot tab and by clicking on that one I can see the off position, I can see the on position, I can see the 122 millimeter position. And I can save these positions with that icon as a exploded state. So as soon as I see these icons I'm I'm getting the chance to save that position on a drawing. Therefore, I'm creating a new drawing. Drawing here, use default templates. Of course, I want to maybe use that guy here. Okay. And it's creating here a nice drawing. He wants me to bring in additional parameters. Yes, let's find some of them, okay, and it's telling me an exploded state is not there. But right now I just want to create here additional views. I'm going here for general view, okay, should be placed here. And I want to use here maybe uh, the view from front, okay, and I want to see here the states, the exploded state of on. And maybe here on the view display, oops, do you want to apply changes one moment? Uh, apply view states, view display, I want to see it be shaded with edges. Okay, so I can, can see that state here. And in that area, I want to see the exploded states of uh, 122 millimeters apply and here I want to see it also with shading with edges. So it's quite easy to bring in let's say different states uh, to a drawing and I would say this is nearly impossible if you'd like to do it uh, with another uh, technique. I think that it's a very very important uh, capability of uh, mechanism and design extension. Let's go back to the assembly mode. Okay, and let's go here for the application mechanism itself. And yes, let let's see maybe the the distance. I want to check during the movement. Uh, I want to check, like, let's say, the, the distance of this component here uh, to that component. And this can only be done when you create before in assembly mode a uh, distance uh, analysis uh, feature. 
and this can be done here under, of course, analysis. I want to do here a distance measurement between two parts. I'm clicking on these two parts. I can see the actual distance. And by uh, pressing this guy here, save, I can save this as a feature. And I say this is maybe distance from part one to part two. Okay, and I'm getting in my model tree this analysis feature. This analysis feature can later be used for measuring the distance during the movement of my components. I'm going back for mechanism to create an analysis. As you remember, I created here a, a motor over 10 seconds. Therefore, I'm creating here a new analysis over 10 seconds. I can bring in here position or kinematic analysis with uh, mechanism design extension. These three analyses, uh, there you need an additional license from mechanism dynamics option. Let's do a kinematic analysis, kin, 10 seconds. Because all the active motors are, are will be taken into the analysis, so I do not have to bring in an additional motor. I just say, okay, I want to uh, start the analysis here, right mouse button with the green flag, and we can see the motion behavior of my component. Of course, uh, here under the measure type, I can bring in, or I can see, let's say, the actual measure of these two distances. I can see that maybe here in the in this graph here. And uh, of course, when I'm, let's say, in that position, this distance here will be constant. Oops, I have to move that a little bit down. This is the area where this distance here is the closest one. And of course, if I may be in that area, the distance here will be the closest. I guess this is that one. And of course, at the end of an my analysis, these components are nearly touching each other here. Okay, so it's quite easy to, uh, let's say, uh, see the distance of two components. In addition to that, you can also define additional, uh, sorry, that was the wrong icon, additional measures. As an example, you can see maybe the velocity. And as an example, I'm just uh, selecting here a specific point. I call this uh, measure V. Okay, and also the V can be shown here in in a graph, this graph can be saved to Excel, all that kind of stuff. And when you want to see, let's say, the behavior of this uh, velocity, you also have the capability to display, uh, let's say, measures uh, as, a, uh, as an arrow. And here I want to see maybe the velocity arrow a little bit bigger. And if I start my movement, I can see here this uh, arrow. And I can see here the velocity of uh, that guy. Okay, it moves back. So it's quite easy to understand my mechanism and to see all the uh, interesting measures on that one. Okay, I'm stopping that one here. In, let's say, the playback mode, you also have the capability to create motion envelopes with a specific level. I want to create the motion envelope as an example here of that guy and that guy here. Okay, I can see the preview. Okay, I can save that guy. And of course, if I'm Going back for my assembly mode, then I can assemble uh, this guy here. This is environment two. 
to the default constraint, I'm getting here, let's say, a placeholder uh, for the movement of these uh, two cylinders. Okay, I'm stopping the assembling of that guy and I'm going back for mechanism design itself. And in mechanism design, I want to create now here this uh, uh, this cam. Oh no, it's not a cam. This trace curve, and that can be done quite easily. I just need the uh, movement behavior. I'm starting the analysis again because I didn't save it. And right now, I can go here for analysis, and I'm using. I want to create a trace curve. Okay. Therefore, I needing I need here some points, okay, and I say I want to create a trace curve on that paper part here of that point, and I want to use that uh, movement behavior. I want to create here a 2D curve. I'm hitting the preview button and I can see this curve here. This is now saved in that component. The same can be done by uh, using a trace curve uh, here, paper part of that vertex with that kinematic behavior, and this will be saved there. So that means right now I'm opening that component. Okay, and here we see that additional group of trace uh, 2D curve, and here we see the curve itself. I'm going to display it. And I want to go for uh, that surface here. I want to create an extrusion. Okay, and the easiest way with an offset of 8 millimeters, minus 8 millimeters, I'm creating here the cam. I'm using additional arc from here to here, I'm using an arc from here to here, okay, and I want to create here a cut, okay, this is going through all, cut is done, I'm going back for my assembly and then can see here, okay, this nice uh, slot follower. Uh, I'm not doing the the other one here the other cut i think it is this is the same behavior so i'm going back for my mechanism itself application mechanism uh in that area here mechanism that the area here i'm starting the analysis again okay and a nice product product is also you can create here some uh, movies in that area. We can also let's say see collision detection during uh, let's say the movement. I don't want to do it right now. I just want to create here a movie itself. So by capturing here that one, I can create a movie uh, called. Shock. Okay, this is an pack and now the movie shock will be uh, saved on my in my working directory. Uh, of course, you can also render uh, this movie, and within twenty seconds, this guy was uh, created. This movie, and here. Oops, I want to open an explorer and here on the lunate you see, okay, this is now the movie called Shock. Quite nice. Okay, uh, this is also a nice uh, uh, capability of Creo mechanism. Yes, and uh, of course you can also create, let's say, quite complicated uh, mechanism, as I stated before. You're going here for the next uh, component here, that guy, this radial engine, uh, engineered by Matt. 
work on GrabCat community. Let's have a look at this uh, mechanism. It takes a little bit more than half an hour to create it. And we want to see uh, how Matt uh, assembled his mechanism. Therefore, I'm going here for that guy. So here we see a very, very detailed engine with all, uh, let's say, the features here. Uh, he created also a version with a cut inside in order to get, let's say, better information what's going on inside. And uh, this guy, Matt, also created here a sub-assembly with all the internal behavior. In that area, I was already suppressing all, let's say, the springs, uh, which were assembled with a so-called flexible uh, components as flexible components. And here, I'm just holding down now my control and uh, Alt key, and I'm turning here. That propeller, and you see, okay, everything is moving. Maybe in that area, see we have here a cam connection. As as soon as I'm moving, this part is moving over that cam connection. This will also start to move here. Let's turn again. This is really live on an old laptop. And I guess I didn't count it, but in this, uh, let's say, assembly, there are at least uh, 150 connections inside. We see here also some uh, cam connection. We see additional connection. Let's go for this uh, mechanism itself. Uh, this radial engine has, let's say, 10 cylinders. And therefore, I really think 150 connections are seen are inside. And of course, there is already a kinematic analysis is defined. I can start that one. And here, a little trick, if you have a very, very big assembly and you want to, let's say, run that one, it takes here quite a long time. So you can stop here, the analysis. And by holding down the right mouse button, you see the settings and you can uh, let's say, uh, switch off the graphical display during run. That means right now, if you start the analysis, it goes much quicker here. You cannot see the movie, the movement during the analysis, but it's, you save, let's say, 60, 80% of the time for, let's say, analyzing uh, big, big, big uh, models. And of course, later on in the playback mode, you can see here uh, the movement behavior. Okay, and there you know, we can start with that guy here. And everything is uh, modeled and of course you can see the accelerations, uh, you can detect clashes, all that kind of stuff can be made with this mechanism, which is include in, included in every uh, license of uh, Creo Parametric. Great, that brings me to the end of uh, this analysis. Uh, a guy, somebody stated here, sure, old laptop, smiley, smiley. Yes, it's an old laptop. It's three and a half year old. Uh, it's an old, old, now it's quite a good laptop, but it's an old uh, P50 of uh, Lenovo. And I would say today, uh, you have much better laptops here. Okay, then let's go back to the PowerPoint uh, presentation. Uh, as I stated before, if you want to have that model, you can download it here. The link will be sent out to you. And additional information during, let's say, the lockdown. Uh, GIA is also uh, 
performing some power online live workshop if you're interested. We have live shops about this tool mechanism and about Creo Simulate, about uh, freestyle and flexible modeling. Unfortunately, let's say this slide is in German, but if you're interested, you can also do a English uh, workshop on that one. Uh, I will check, let's say, the question panel. Are there any questions so far? Uh, one moment, yes, there is one. When I press the mechanism button on the analysis top, I get Creo error. The option mechanism design has not been acquired. Oh, that might be if you really have a very, 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 very old version or license. Uh, this must be at least, I would say, 12 year old. Then mechanism design was not included. And if you are maybe working with the a license feature called uh, Mechanica Foundation, uh, then you also do not have this mechanism design extension. But let's say with a normal Creo parametric license, which isn't older than 12 years, you should have uh, uh, access to mechanism design extension. If you have any problem, please send me a mail or uh, call me uh, directly. Then there is another question. Can you share the model inclusive the lunette? Yes, I will share it to the person uh, who likes to have it. Of course, uh, you just have to buy me a beer when we see us next time, but no problem. If somebody likes to have this model, please send me a mail and I can uh, distribute uh, it. I'm waiting for uh, other questions, yes, that the beer is confirmed, thank you. Next question, on the wind chill, uh, is it creating any new object in the database? No, not at all. This is uh, also a, a nice uh, behavior because this is a really integrated core Product. This is this is Creo Parametric, or it was Pro Engineer. It was Wildfire. What else? There is no additional file created by Creo Mechanism Design. Uh, only when you write out maybe the the movement behavior of your component. When I'm going here for my Lunette again, and you you go here maybe for the playback. And in that area, if you say, oh, okay, I want to create here the results or I want to create the FRA file, then a new object will be created. But by, by default, everything is stored in the main assembly. And if you assemble that assembly somewhere else, uh, let's say also this, this information, including drivers and and what else will be or can be used in in let's say all the others all the other assembly in the main assemblies so i'm checking again the question panel i guess there are no more questions so far no questions all good Yes, then I would say that brings me to the end of that uh, webinar. I'd like to thank you for your time. I hope this uh, webinar was interesting for you. Uh, as I stated at the beginning of the webinar, uh, tomorrow uh, you'll get the download link for uh, presentation and uh, recording. And yes, I'd like to thank you for your time. I'd like to thank for the beers I'm getting for my lunette. And I hope we'll sooner see us soon. 
I hope live or somewhere else and I wish you very very good health stay stay safe and sound and really I, I enjoyed uh, it to present you this module take care see you soon bye bye arrivederci a bientôt au revoir Vital Worker, bis bald mal.